Well, it turns out that the COVID-19 boosters are a bust, and here is what provincial data in Ontario is showing as the globalists push for internationally agreed upon rules and dialect for the use of digital health certificates. Last week, Pfizer announced that it would be launching a 3.5 billion, yes, that's with a B, dollar cost-cutting program amid declining COVID vaccine uptake and revenue drops, wherein the company said full-year revenues for its various vaccines and Paxlovid was $9 billion lower than what was anticipated, as reported by Forbes. Paxlovid full-year revenue expectations were lowered by about $7 billion, while revenue for the vaccine expectations were reduced by approximately $2 billion because of lower-than-expected vaccination rates. People are done being lab rats at the altars of pharmaceutical oligarchs and their profits. And I guess that's why Pfizer has attempted to save face by hiring KC Chiefs Travis Kelsey in their latest non-evidence-based endorsement of receiving a novel COVID booster at the same time as a flu shot. Look at this. Did you know you can get this season's COVID-19 shot when you get your flu shot? Oh, two things at once. Two things at once! Two things at once! <laughs> two things at once! I'll have the... Two things at once, please. Now, back to two things at once. Two things at once. That's not two things at once. Mom! Travis, ask about getting this season's COVID-19 shot when getting your flu shot. While Pfizer tries to hype up its dwindling products, Kelsey's girlfriend, Taylor Swift, is single-handedly saving economies. And the proof is in the pudding that the novel shots and the novel supposed therapeutics manufactured at the speed of science in 2020 and onwards are being rejected by the vast majority of the population. Do you want to start feeling like your pre-COVID self again? You're not alone. The wellness company Spike Support Formula is an all-natural supplement to help people do just that. It was created by cardiologist Peter McCullough and his expert team of doctors to help the people experiencing effects from COVID and the you-know-what. Go to twc.health slash rebel today. Let's look at the data from Public Health Ontario, for instance. COVID-19 vaccine uptake in Ontario from December 14th, 2020 to October 9th, 2023. These updates are given every four weeks. Figure one shows the number of COVID-19 vaccine doses administered over time by dose number. Look at that. The most injected class could have received up to eight novel injections, six of them being boosters, and probably still have gotten multiple COVID infections, but it looks like most people hopped off of the booster revolving door after doses two and three. Figure number two shows that most people received either the original Moderna or Pfizer shots, that's the dark blue and yellow lines respectively, but the subsequent colors are minimal at best. Sadly, according to Table 1, as of October 9th, a total of 245 babies aged 6 months to age 4 have received various dosing options of the Moderna Spikevax XBB 1.5 compared to 201 children aged 5 to 11, and 60 adolescents aged 12 to 17. That's for a shot that Health Canada's own regulatory decision summary shows that the average age of trial participants was 51.6 years old, with a participant age range of 21 to 84 years. Therefore, it was never tested on the above mentioned babies, children, or adolescents. Rather, safety and effectiveness are Quote, inferred from studies of a primary series and booster dose of Spikevax bivalent, the original slash Omicron BA.1, end quote. As more people become aware that they're being subjected to real-time, real-world experimentation, that pesky thing that some used to refer to as a necessity for medical ethics called informed consent, well, now we can see that there are a ton of anti-vaxxers out this fall. Figure 3 shows that the vast majority of each demographic was vaccinated over 12 months ago. Check out the note at the bottom of the page. The MOH, that's the Medical Officer of Health, has moved away from using the terms primary series and booster dose to align with the National Advisory Committee on Immunization, that's NACI, and product monographs. The term 
previously vaccinated is now used to describe an individual's vaccination status, and for individuals five years of age and older, refers to the receipt of at least one dose of any COVID-19 vaccine to date. That's because health overlords are moving away from the term booster, too, since the COVID shots are now part of an incorporated seasonal dose regime. You don't have the word booster here. I wanted to know, is that intentional? And are you wanting Canadians to change the way they look at getting the COVID vaccine? I think we wanted to um, emphasize this is an updated um, COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, and similarly, we update influenza vaccines as well. Um, and it will increase, and getting an additional dose will increase um, your immunity, uh, your antibody levels, uh, and uh, also increase uh, vaccine protection against serious outcomes. Um, yeah, it's, it's a matter of terminology, but I think we're trying to standardize and simplify some of the um, various terms at the moment. Uh, I know perhaps Dr. Sharma has a take on that and uh, Dr. Tunis as well. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Tam. So yes, there's been lots of discussions amongst regulators around terminology. And so there was, there's an internationally agreed upon simplified um, dosing schedule now. So that's, it was, it, we won't see the words primary series as much or booster. And it's not quite stabilized yet, but the idea is that we'll get to a place where it may be much like the flu vaccines where people may be on a regular schedule getting a, an updated vaccine. Might that internationally agreed upon dosing schedule have anything to do with the June 2023 World Health Organization and European Union decision to strengthen global health security through the use of digital health certificates? The news release reads. In June 2023, the WHO, that's the World Health Organization, will take up the European Union system of digital COVID-19 certification to establish a global system that will help facilitate global mobility and protect citizens across the world from ongoing and future health threats, including pandemics. This is the first building block of the WHO Global Digital Health Certification Network, the GDHCN, that will develop a wide range of digital products to deliver better health for all. Is this really about global health or is it veering more towards global surveillance? Regardless, it seems that the general population is hopping off of the revolving door of booster bandwagon. For Rebel News, I'm Tamara Ugolini. In 2010, Canada's Chief Public Health Officer Teresa Tam was featured in a movie called Outbreak, Anatomy of a Plague. And while she seemed to know exactly what to do about a disease outbreak in that film, in Pretend Life, she has fumbled the COVID-19 response since 2020 in real life. If you agree that Tam needs to be replaced with someone more competent, then please head on over to our petition and compilation reports page at firetam.com. There you can sign our petition and of course, check out all of our other reports and support our journalistic efforts if you're able to. That's firetam.com.